welcome to the 12 o'clock session. Um, this session is all about Facebook advertising and leads. Um, can I get a, for starters, can I see a raise of a show of hands? Who actually uses Facebook ads and, and, and sponsored posts? Sweet, sweet. So we got, we got some people on the line that can talk about it. Um, Hey, awesome, man. I've never met you before. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. If, if you're cool, uh, you want to talk about one of your successes uh, with, with Facebook ads? You can decline too. Um, I mean, I've, I've ran, I haven't, I'm pretty new to running ads. I do most of my spent in digital marketing through Zillow. Um, so the cost per lead with Zillow is obviously very high. So it's much cheaper to run Facebook book ads and there's a lot of companies that'll do them for you um i tried to do it myself i understand that there's some nuance to it um but part of the reason why i joined the training is to um learn more i always put my boomtown or my crm link in my ads so that i can capture the lead that way and then i just do my own follow-up cool um are you pretty quick in your follow-up or or do you, do you sit back, relax, and, and let just watch them fill up in your CRM? No, I'm, I, I stay on top of it. Cool, cool, yeah. I heard, I heard it, the, 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 the time keeps shrinking. It used to be five minutes a few years ago. Now everybody's like, as soon as that hits your CRM, you've got about 20 seconds to get a hold of this person, or essentially the lead can go cold pretty quickly. Um, yeah. Well, hey, brother, thanks, thanks uh, for, for being a good sport and, uh, and, and sharing a little bit of your information. Um, does anybody else want to talk about some some successes they've had with uh, Facebook advertising or um, anything that's changed over the years and, and what you're dealing with uh, recently with Facebook ads? Hi, um, <clears throat> my name is Michelle Kanzler. Can everyone hear me all right? You hear, you're coming in great. Awesome. I wanted to share with you something. I've dappled a little bit with Facebook ads and other lead generation sources, but ironically, you can get stuff just free. Recently, I posted out to my sphere, just public on Facebook, and said, hey, Facebook friends, I have buyers in your areas looking for properties like yours. I got a virtual lead off of Facebook, listed the property, and we're closing this week. Um, I think we listed first week of May, and you know, anyway, so you can do all kinds of creative things, either pay for it or even try to be creative and free. Make it fun. Right. Um, so does anybody have any tips? Because obviously Facebook advertising is, it can be tough, right? First, what, what is the content? Does anybody have any tips to get somebody to stop scrolling? And I'll tell you, I'll tell you mine in a little bit. Um, and and it'll, I'll encourage you to, to be more involved with, with getting yourself out there. But before, but before um, I, I move forward, does anybody have any tips that they've heard to get people to stop scrolling? Because when I see a sponsored underneath the post, my thumb cannot move any faster. I don't want to be advertised to. And I'm sure a lot of you are the same way. Kevin, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll throw in a suggestion for you all. Uh, folks, my name's Kevin as well, Kevin Kruger. Uh, if you notice, I'm wearing my Boston Bruins uh, baseball hat. So that leads into my conversation here. So before I moved to Miami to do commercial real estate brokerage, I had a boutique uh, sports shop in Fenway. And uh, social media lends itself. There we go. I see another Boston fan here. Um, social media lends itself to sports content or political content, whatever the buzzworthy, newsworthy, feel good topic of the day. Um, I, I work off the 80-20 rule in commercial real estate brokerage marketing. So if I'm doing general marketing on social media, whether it's paid, which we don't do right now, or, or um, organic, it's mostly about the lifestyle that is attractive in Miami, uh, whether you're trying to retain, let's say a resident to uh, choose and maybe choose a second home or an apartment or something, or you're trying to attract that New Yorker, um, go with whatever's topical in the, in the public, what, you know, what, what they're talking about in social media. So the reason why I point out my Bruins hat 
my team's in the in the de facto Stanley Cup. So what you might do, we we also have some swag. Um, so instead of like a Rise Realty polo, or that's our brokerage firm, or um, uh, like a, a Rise Realty pen, a lot of you guys will do a real estate pen. We give them something useful. We ended up making shades, and we can sell these sunglasses to people. So maybe you all have something that you could manufacture like a product that people want and market that and then you also get some payback and oh by the way it comes from such and such brokerage firm that you're with that's an idea is uh to work off the 80 20 rule and 80 percent of your marketing could be something topical that the public's already talking about and then they can discover you and be like oh that person does real estate brokerage just a suggestion no that's great um yeah, that's that's a that's a great ratio. Um, I think one one thing that that everybody kind of discounts and, and it's probably the most important thing is your own damn face. Um, when when I'm marketing, um, I for at least Miami YPN, it's it's the best results I get are the people. You know, I can have a sweet skyline of Miami, and people in Miami already know what that skyline kind of looks like, and so maybe they're more apt to to roll on. So at the end of the day, if you're not putting yourself out there, it's not, your notoriety is not going to happen overnight. Um, you know, I've, I've been helping with this, uh, this network for, for about four years now, and, and I'm, I'm still a relatively unknown, unknown character. And that's partially by design because, you know, I'm, I'm looking to, to promote the people on the leadership board. But at the end of the day, it's got to be your face, guys. You got to get that recognition um, and, and you got to throw yourself out there. Um, Sasha, I'm going to put you on the spot. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you've been successful with TikTok and, and how your, your consistent posting has, has potentially helped you maybe get a few leads. You want to talk about that? Sure, sure. Um, so, you know, again, I'm a new realtor. And so I wanted people to know who I am, of course, and, and find different ways to get people uh, attention just besides the postcards and the emails and etc so um you know uh, I, I don't want to say thank god for covid but uh because of covid i really uh started utilizing tiktok i was already on instagram and facebook but because i saw the stats uh of how people downloaded tiktok and were making videos and dances etc cetera, etc cetera, so i took that opportunity to to start off with just you know doing it with my family. And then also I said, you know what, why not do something funny or, or relatable that towards my business? So I just went ahead and I, I, I promoted my business in a funny way that can relate to the general audience that are actually on, on TikTok. And it's not just um, um, teenagers or, or kids, there's adults on TikTok as well. So, you know, you're home, a lot of people are unemployed as well, and they're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok being the number one. So I went ahead and I capitalized on it. Um, I, because of TikTok, I went ahead and I distributed those videos on Facebook and Instagram as well, which led to a lot of referrals. People DM, DMing me, <clears throat> excuse me, Stating, oh, I saw your TikTok about, you know, uh, documents that you need in order to get pre-approved or, or whatever the video that I did. So I got a lot of feedback off of that. And I was able to, again, like I said, get some referrals. I've closed on a few deals. Um, and then, oh, well, obviously it's taking time, but because of COVID and, and all the delays. But um, right now I have four active contracts and they're all due to social media. So it definitely does work. And I say to actually, you know, like Kevin says, you really need to put your face out there because people don't just want to see a post or a picture or anything. They want to see who you are as a person, you know, if, you know, if, if you're, I don't know, a dancer, use that and make it funny and just give some information about the loan process or, you know, don't go out buying a car while you're under contract. Um, you know, just make it fun. Something relatable for people to see. Now, Sasha, do you use, do you use uh, any sponsored posts yourself? Um, I did one and, you know, 
<laughs> what was okay? So you seem a little disappointed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to maybe uh, hit hit a nerve there, but um, no, 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 it, no. What I mean, what was your learning experience from it? Because obviously, sometimes a bad experience is a way better learning experience than than a than a good experience. You know? Yeah. Um. It wasn't. A, it wasn't that it was a bad experience because you know you always want to take the positive, even though the outcome wasn't what you were expected. So I went ahead and I, and I sold a, a listing down in exit nine in Princeton and I did a seller ad. So I obviously I was trying to attract sellers, but all the leads that I were, I was getting, which is great, by the way, I'm not, I'm not disappointed or anything. They were all buyers. So I don't know how that happened, but, um, and these buyers, I mean, not saying that they're not great buyers, you know, because I want to help everyone, but, you know, it was a little bit more challenging um, in that sense. But, but nonetheless, it was, it was a great advertisement. I was just expecting sellers instead of buyers. <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting. Um, well, I mean, at least hopefully you've nurtured them a little bit and hopefully, you know, maybe if they don't, uh, you know, do business with you right away, hopefully, right, you know, right. you're, you're the person and, and uh, some of the content that that you create is a great way to drip out to them as well, just to, to remind them that you are who you are and and that you're fun to do business with. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that was the reason why I asked uh, Gabriel, um, because one of the leads that I got, he, he wanted to see one of the properties that day right away. So obviously, you're not really that prepared versus somebody that you have a scheduled um, um, uh, a scheduled meeting with, you know, so I wanted to see what his tips were. So that's, that's where I got that. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Um, do most of you use video? Does anybody using the carousel? Is anybody using um, other other techniques besides video? I mean, obviously, we should be marketing yourself. But at the end of the day, we're selling homes. So that is also another big portion. Um, what are people oh. using? Go ahead. All right. Sorry. Can I just say that? I don't know if you guys know, I know a lot of people are not really keen on using TikTok because of all the controversy, but Instagram now implemented reels, which is basically their version of TikTok. So if you're not on there, be on there as well. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, I don't know how well reels are going to do. I'm sure it's taking on just fine, but I don't know how that'll be for, for sponsored ads later on down the road. But yeah. I'm sure there'll be some very genius, way, like a genius way to, to, to market it. I've already seen a pretty cool, a few pretty cool reels myself. Um, okay, so what, what are other people doing? What, what is, uh, or what's one cool thing that you heard about Facebook ads or, or just uh, social media in general that you're thinking about implementing, but just not sure how to get started? Does anybody want to say anything about that? Kevin, I just want to jump on really quickly, if I can. Please. Uh, so, Desi, good to hear you, man. Yeah. So, guys, I'm going to be on at one about talking about creating inventory. So, that's coming soon. But one thing that I'm doing with video that has had pretty good success is I started a, basically like an interview series where I'm interviewing inspectors, loan officers, title companies, and talking about the most common problems. FHA versus conventional, common inspection issues, the top title issues that make deals fall through. And I put them all on YouTube and I am doing sponsored posts to attract buyers and sellers, depending on what the topic is. And it's been going phenomenal. So what I recommend for you guys to do is check it out. Maybe you want to do something similar. You're more than welcome to go in, see what I'm doing, steal the content. You have my permission and you can find it on YouTube, Mr. Miami real estate. So now that we're on the, the topic of YouTube and, and this is a, just a quick point. Um, so I hear if you do ads that are just those banners down below, down below, you know, those annoying banners that, that sometimes get in the way of the video. They're not going to be annoying for you. Well, some people might think they are, but uh, don't have that mindset because there's a pretty good opportunity here. Let's say somebody hops on the video. It is on there for three or five seconds and then they hop off. Um, YouTube doesn't charge you. So um, that's a great way just to get yourself out there. It's free advertising. And, um, and just a, a new interesting, well, not new, but an interesting way to get some free marketing and, and, and able to put yourself out there depending on what your banner looks like. But once again, <clears throat> it would probably include your face to that. Um, all right, so one more thing that let's talk about, we got, we got about 12 minutes left in this session, is um, you guys should be thinking about tweaking your videos. 
sometimes one video is great um, and you can repurpose parts and, and things like that. And, and what I would challenge you to do is to see um, which tweak works the best. And when you finally find out what tweak really is kind of getting the, getting the most momentum, does anybody know what you're supposed to do after that? Anybody? Say uh, it's a blackjack term. Does that help? Double down. You double down. Yeah. So as soon as you find something that has traction, pour money into it because you can, you can definitely keep pouring money into it and keep seeing new faces. And if it's successful with one group of people, it's, there's going to be a very high likelihood that you are going to see um, success with a different group of people. Um, you might want to switch up the area code or you might want to switch up uh, the Facebook groups that are similar, but, um, you know, just aren't exactly the same to the group that you marketed first. So those are certainly all things you can do. Um, another great tip. Okay. So this one's cool too. Um, everybody's familiar with geofencing, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So who here holds open houses? In COVID? I guess open houses <laughs> are a little bit different right now. Um, <laughs> But if, if it's a virtual open house, there's got to be some sort of URL, right? That would ping your thing anyways. So what you want to do is after somebody's visited your physical open house or a virtual open house is if it's a physical one, because let's, let's face it, we're eventually going to get back to normal. And, and there are some open houses taking place now. They're obviously, the, the standards are much more rigorous and different. But you can geofence that area and anybody that walks onto that property, you can market to later at a different time. Um, and and for, for what we're dealing with right now, the workaround there is how many times has somebody looked at some sort of product on Amazon and then all of a sudden you can't look in any direction on the internet without seeing that product. Is that true? So I think the same concept with your virtual open houses, right? And, and the thing with open houses is they might not be a fan of that house, but what you should be trying to do is to, if it's not that house, you should have five others in your pocket to, to actually, um, you know, market to, to other people as well. So you should always be trying to find if, if not a, then maybe B or C and, and a great way to do that sometimes is, is through those Facebook ads. So maybe you don't show them the exact same property. Maybe you, you do a bio or maybe you uh, send a different, similar property that's within the same price range, but maybe a slightly different style as a way to, um, as a way to continue to attract them and to stay in front of them. Because in this industry, and even with this network that I run, it is completely a touch business. I have to touch you. I have to, not physically, but I have to get in front of you multiple times before I actually get you to sign up. So, I mean, I posted for, for 10 days straight, different, different tips, different promos for you to see it. Um, I also sent uh, an email marketing campaign, a drip campaign every day. I didn't even change the content up too much because I knew somebody's going to see that Ari Bar Camp with that fire logo next to it and be like, oh, I'm not going to open up that email today. I'm too freaking busy. But maybe the next day, if I got you at a different time at 7 a.m., maybe you were like, oh, I do have time. And, and maybe you were to register.